What's going on? TK coming at you. I represent Master Wealth Builders LLC as a company uh, in the financial services industry for both uh, life, annuity, and health. So as a certified financial professional, I uh, hope to help someone. That's why I do these videos. And uh, today I wanted to talk to you about trust. Um, having a living trust for those who thought about setting it up, uh, don't understand what it is and, uh, really just want to learn more. So the first thing you have to do is just do some homework, do some reading, but, uh, I'm going to explain my personal family trust as it applies to me. And then you can decide what works best for your family, Right. So what I did was set up a uh, revocable living trust. And the reason why I went with a revocable living trust is because revocable means you can edit it every single year. You can, you know, make adjustments. Right. And when you are under a million dollars in assets, revocable works when you get over a million dollars in assets, you can switch from a living trust to a permanent trust, which is called a irrevocable trust. And the, the concept is just to protect your family. Whatever you own, right? Uh, or I should say whatever assets you have, you want to put it in a trust so that it protects it from probate and it also protects it from creditors. And then what you're doing in this document is basically given a set of instructions in terms of how you want your assets handled when you're no longer here. So no one can go to court and say, well, I think the house should go to me. Or I'm going to, your kids say, well, I'm going to sell the house because I want the proceeds. You know, whatever's in your trust is locked and, you know, they don't have the ability to um, do that, right? So your trust has an EIN. And your trust also has a uh, bank account. So basically, um, as it applies to life insurance, what I did was I followed the Rockefeller family trust example, right? Rockefeller trust is um, endowed with so much power and money because they're seven generations deep. So you have to have a succession clause in your trust that says that the trustee will put a life insurance policy on every new member of the family. And you want to make that policy be as large as what you can afford, uh, you know, with the money that you're working with. So that's important. That's your succession clause. And then you also need to have an investment clause which basically says that when the money gets deposited into the trust bank account, a portion of it will go into an asset that puts money back into the trust so that you're not just depleting your account. So you want to be able to uh, put future policies on future generations, which puts money back into the trust as each generation passes on. And then you also want to be able to put um, you know, like 50% of the trust into an asset that multiplies the money in the account. So those are the two things that I did. And then the very first asset that I put into the trust was my life insurance policies. So that's also the Rockefeller strategy. Um, the beneficiary of your life insurance is your trust. That's the key. So, um, you know, this is what I did for me. You can figure out what works for you. I'm just giving you an example. If you, you know, thought about doing it, want to learn more about it, don't really understand it. Um, you know, the, the, the trust purpose is, like I say, asset protection, right? And your biggest asset can be your life insurance. So, Apply for life insurance. Make sure that you make the uh, trust the beneficiary of your policy. 
And uh, in my case, the trust is the owner and the beneficiary. So understand that structure um, and then sit down and get it done. Um, if you want a basic trust, I can help you do that. If you need a expansive, uh, complicated trust, then I can refer you to, um, you know, an estate lawyer. So the idea is just to help. <laughs> Believe it or not, um, that's how insurance works. Uh, in insurance, you get paid only from the insurance company when you help someone set up something for their family. That's the only way money comes to you when you're a licensed insurance agent. So it's beneficial if you want to keep your license to help people in a manner that aligns with your fiduciary duty. Otherwise, you know, you could lose your license. So if any of this makes sense to you, if you've ever wanted to set up a trust, use the link in my bio. I can help you get it set up as long as it's a, a non-complicated basic trust. And same thing in terms of getting insurance. If you want to apply for life insurance and you like to start this succession plan that I explained, then click the link in my bio. But, um, you know, you can go to any licensed professional. What you'll find out is that not all professionals are created equal. I try to focus on a total family approach where everyone in the family has a policy and all of it gets put into your trust. Not every uh, professional does that. And not every professional is working in the best interest of clients. So do what you feel comfortable with. I don't, you know, I don't have any control over that. And you'll also find that, um, you know, you go to, uh, when you set up a trust with someone else, I put it this way, it, you know, a lawyer charges a whole lot of money for trust established. So um, my plan is just to get you thinking in that direction. And hopefully this video helps you.